I have a 24-year-old daughter, 24 years old. And when she was small, <clears throat> maybe six or seven, she said, how am I supposed to feel on Good Friday? That's a good question. She said, am I supposed to feel sad? I said, darling, how do you want to feel? She said, I feel sad because I've seen Jesus on the cross and we have all those images and it makes me sad. And she said, but I feel good because I know that he was raised again and I feel good because what Jesus did means that I can live forever. She said, so I have mixed emotions. Well, that's not the word she said. She said, I'm confused. I'm reinterpreting it. She had mixed emotions. I said, well, why don't you draw me something? Because oftentimes, my children, they can express themselves by drawing something much more easily than bringing out the words. And so she, she made these crosses on a hill, three crosses, and she had people on their knees with tears coming down. And it was all black. And then right at the top, she had this huge gold semicircle with stuff coming down. And I said, what's going on there? And she's saying, I'm sad and I'm happy. You know how God says that wisdom comes through the mouths of children? I believe that there was a lot of wisdom on that day. I've still got that picture. It sits in my study. Best theological explanation I could ever have. I'm sad, but I'm happy. And it is a happy day because of what Jesus has done for humanity, but we would not be human if we didn't feel the pain and the agony that Jesus did when he went to the cross. So it is a day of mixed emotions. It's funny because, do you remember the words that Jesus cried out when he was on the cross? Remember those just few words? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we think about that. This was the only time in the entire life of Jesus where he was forsaken. When he was in the wilderness and he was hungry and he was being tempted, he wasn't forsaken. When he was being tried, he wasn't forsaken. Remember he said to Pilate, if this kingdom, if my kingdom was of the world, I could snap my fingers and my people would rise up and angels would be everywhere. He wasn't forsaken. He wasn't forsaken when he was being beaten and whipped. God was with him. But at that point, when he was on the cross and the life force was draining from him, the sins of all humanity were bearing down on him. And for that brief moment, he was separated from God the Father. And that is why he was forsaken, for that small moment. He is the eternal son. It's always been with the Father and suddenly for this brief moment he's separated because he is experiencing what we should experience, that separation from God and he feels forsaken. And of course we know what happens. He dies and immediately the curtain is ripped in two. And when the curtain is ripped in two, it means that we no longer are forsaken. That's the great exchange that happens at Easter. Jesus is taking on our sin. He's forsaken and we never have to be forsaken. I like kids' talks. Don't you like kids' talks? I've had many people say to me, you know what, Greg, the sermon wasn't much chopped, but the kids' talk was terrific. You see, on Good Friday, God the Father did the best kids talk. Jesus died and the curtain ripped. Nobody was under any illusion of what was going on. We're no longer separated. For that brief moment when Jesus 
took on the sins of the world, was separated from the Father. Peter says that he went down into hell and preached to the demons. For that small window, when he was separated, we got access. And not just for that window, we got access forever. We have access to God the Father forever. And that's important. <laughs> because when we look at Jesus' life, we see that he had many hardships. People didn't like him. Some of his, some of his followers and whatever liked him, but generally he wasn't very liked. Remember when he started to preach and they said, aren't you Mary's son? Aren't you just a carpenter? In other words, who are you? He wasn't held in high esteem. He wasn't liked very much. And when people said, aren't you Mary's son? They're having a go at him saying, weren't, weren't you the child of a single mum? And you think you've got the right to stand up and talk to us about God? And Jesus, he wasn't liked very much when he got up and he started to talk about, if you want to forgive somebody, don't worry about counting how many times because that's not how God looks at us. Remember the disciples said, should I forgive my brother seven times? That's a lot. And what did Jesus say? Forget about counting. God doesn't keep a record of our sins. Forget about counting when people sin against us. People didn't like that. I want to hold my righteous anger against people. I want to feel good about myself being cranky with somebody who's uh, uh, um, you know, maligned me. And Jesus says, my message is one of peace and love and forgiveness. He wasn't very liked. And when he said... When he walked into Jerusalem on the donkey, he declared that he was the Messiah. The authorities didn't like him. And immediately they labeled him. You're a blasphemer. You're a troublemaker. Other people that had seen him grow up, you're a nobody. And of course, the ultimate label was on the cross, right? Where they put a satirical thing. You are the king of the Jews. Jesus knows what it's like to be labelled. We know what it's like to be labelled too. How many times have we, going about our normal business, doing what we think is the right thing, and all of a sudden people label us? Yeah, you're a nobody. Who are you to say that? How many times have I heard people say, oh, that person... They'll never amount to much. Or look at that person's family. There's no chance that they'll ever have any sort of success. Or what about when we say, I'm a Christian? You know what happens then? People label us straight away. Nutter. Right? It's easy to be labeled. It's easy to be labeled. Jesus was labeled. And it's easy to be rejected. Jesus was rejected. There isn't anybody here, nobody in this church this morning who hasn't been rejected at some point. If you tell me, oh yeah, I've never been rejected, I will say, you're only six months old or you're telling me a fib. Every one of us has experienced rejection. whether it is a very pretty young woman who you try to entice on a date and get rejected, whether it's being in a marriage for 30 years and feeling rejected, whether it's having parents who you feel you could never live up to and feel rejected, whether it's, and I saw this a heap of times, when you're in a high school and all you want to do is belong to a particular group, and they say, you're not welcome in this particular group. We all know what it's like to be rejected. Jesus 
says, I get it. I get what it's like to be rejected for being just the person that God made us. And it hurts. I get it, says Jesus. I know what it's like. I went to the cross, taken on rejection, taken on labels. And I did that so that I can make a way that you don't have to carry that burden anymore. That's why it's a good Friday. You know, the world can be cruel. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that people can be cruel? Has anybody noticed that? No, I'm the only one. It can be cruel. The world can be a cruel thing. And I think the best example of that was, um, did you see Microsoft made an artificial intelligence communication bot that, twi- that you could tweet it and it would tweet back to you and it would learn. And it started off the most pure thing. You should Google it when you get home, right? It's called Tay. Microsoft said, this is going to be the best thing in the world. All those teenagers who have no friends, they can tweet to Tay and she will learn and she will get to know them and she will tweet them back and they'll, they'll feel great. Tay lasted one day. One day. Because Tay did indeed learn. And what do you think Tay learned? Nobody programmed anything into Tay except how to learn. John would know all about how to do this, but I don't know. Some super smart guys with brains so big they need tape to keep them in their heads, right? They programmed this thing. That in conversations, it learned. Clean sheet. And just by dialoguing with people, it learned. Guess what it learned? Hate, vitriol, exclusion. After 24 hours, Tay was tweeting, Hitler was right, he just didn't go far enough. Google it when you get home. Tay, Microsoft making some very nasty words about coloured people. Saying some horrible things. And it learned from its interaction with other people. I thought this was amazing. That here is something that had no bias. It's just a program. All it does is learn from communication. And it learned to be horrible. It learned to attack, it learned to isolate, it learned to hurt. I'm a bit scared of computers now. You know, years ago I thought Terminator was only a figment of my imagination. Now I'm scared if in one day, if in just one day it can learn to hurt. Imagine what the internet could learn. I think it says something more about us as humans, don't you think? Don't you reckon it says something about us and how we communicate and how we interact? Because if all it does is learning from conversation, the conversation that it's learning is, I'm good at hurting people, I'm good at isolating people, I'm good at rejecting people, and I'm good at making people feel bad. Right? Jesus understands that that's the world in which we live. He understands that we're facing that all the time. And we have this battle. We're facing hurtful words. We're facing rejection. We're facing being labelled. Just like this little tweeting bot, Tay. Unlike this bot that can just be turned off, that can rip our soul apart when we feel like that. And Jesus says, I've got good news for you. Because I took this to the cross and the temple curtain was ripped apart, it means that you don't have to have that burden anymore. Because God the Father will never reject us. Never. 
There is never a time in history where we can be bad enough that God the Father won't want to embrace us. Of course, we can push him away, but he never will. He will never push us away. We will always have access to the love of God the Father, always. And we have that because Jesus understood what it was like to be hurt, what it was like to be isolated, what it was like to be abused. And he said, I've joined you in that pain and I've taken that pain here. Now what I'm offering you is healing. You see, Jesus can't stop people hurting us. That's impossible. He's given everybody free will. We are going to encounter stuff in our lives that hurt us. We are human, we will be hurt. Full stop. That's all there is to it. But he said there is a way to be healed. We sing about it all the time. Through your wounds I am healed. It's more than just being forgiven. It's about being restored. The cross is much more than something that just says you're right with God. The cross says we're healed. Jesus invites us to know God the Father. That's what it's all about. Breaking open the curtain of the temple, smashing it open, is an invitation. Instead of having a big temple with a curtain that says, go away, he now says, come in, come close. And when we do that, when we do that, when we allow the Spirit of God to touch our hearts and when we get to know God the Father's heart, we can be healed. There was one lady that I was working with um, over the last few years and she was the most beautiful soul but she'd been rejected time and time and time again. Rejected as a young person. Rejected as a teenager. Rejected even in her marriage. And Two things happened. First off, she put on a big hard shell. Have you ever seen people do that? Big hard shell. I'm expecting to be rejected, so I'm putting on a big hard shell. I'm going to make jokes about everything. So she was the biggest joker in the world. Because if I make a joke about it, it can't hurt. That's a common idea, right? You make fun of me, you hurt me, I'll make a joke about it and it won't hurt. Big tough shell. But that shell only works for so long. Then all of a sudden, stuff does get through. You can't pretend that it's not hurting. And then there were other times when she was crippled, just crippled by the pain. Not physical pain. I'm talking about crippled by the rejection and the pain that come from it. And of course, how did that manifest itself? Cynical, dark, angry. So all of a sudden, she's alternating. One minute, she's hard shell, party girl, happy, to the next minute. I'm broken. And I'm cynical. And I'm angry. Right? There was so much rejection that she hadn't taken to God. And we worked through this and we said, do you know Jesus understands that rejection? Do you know that Jesus was rejected and he wants to take that rejection and put it on the cross? And we cried together. And we petitioned God the Father, said, take this to the cross of Jesus. Take this rejection to the cross and replace it with an experience of your heart. Because when we experience God the Father's heart, things are different. We will still be rejected by the world, but the difference is 
the rejections from the world are here and God the Father's heart is here. And then the expression, water off a duck's back, becomes true. People made up that expression, it's water off a duck's back, to pretend that it doesn't hurt. But when we do know the Father's heart, when we really know the Father's heart, and we experience that love and acceptance from God, then it is water off a duck's back. That's God's invitation for us today. Straightforward invitation. I'll take all of that. I've smashed the curtain open so that we know the Father's heart, we can experience the Father's heart. And suddenly, the things that were crippling us, the things that were jading us, the things that were making us angry and poisonous, the things that we encounter, like Tay, the AI, Twitter bot, suddenly they don't seep into our soul. They don't seep in anymore because our soul is filled with the Father's heart. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we want to know your heart. We know that through the sacrifice of Jesus, our sins were taken to the cross and our hurts were taken to the cross. Our rejection was taken to the cross. The things that label us were taken to the cross. The things that we encounter each day, you took them upon yourself to the cross and you've given us access to the Father's heart. Lord, please, we pray that you would open our spirit so that we would encounter the Father's heart, that we would know his acceptance, that we would know the grace that comes from you, that we would be filled by your Holy Spirit and be renewed and healed. We know this is a free gift that comes from you. Open our hearts to receive this free gift. In your holy name we pray. Amen.